This is section 7.1 AP Calculus, area between two curves. What we want to try to do here is find the area between two curves. So when we do say area, we're talking about a positive quantity. We're still going to use integrals to figure this out, um, but we want to set up our rectangles a little bit differently. So a little introduction here. If we want to find the area between two curves, we have to find the points of intersection. You can do it algebraically or with your calculator. Uh, draw cuts, uh, the Riemann rectangle to represent the area from one curve to another, and then set up the integral, right bound, uh, left bound to right bound, top minus bottom dx. If I draw a picture here, for this situation, I'm, I can have two curves. If this is my x and this is my y, I have a curve here and I have a curve here. If you notice, this would be an intersection point, this would be an intersection point. So what I'm trying to do is find the area in between here. And then from that, I try to draw this Riemann rectangle, which I call cut. And with this cut, you just got to make sure it's consistent over that whole interval, where this is your A and this is your B. And I'm going to go top minus bottom. And this one right here would be a smaller cut, smaller cut, and then here a bigger cut. What, will this, what this will translate into is another curve. If I take this top minus bottom, and it will just turn out, that was probably not perfect, but this cut here is equivalent to this cut here. This is a transformation of this area here, and so we just get a new function that we're dealing with. And when we say dx, this value will be x equal to my lower bound, and this one will be x equal to my upper bound. Uh, you can read some more of these things, and then they help you out there with some of the information that we're going through. Now, also, sometimes what happens is that your cuts um, should run from one function to another. If they run from one function to itself, you might want to try doing the cuts in a horizontal manner. And so when you do it in a horizontal manner, everything will be dy. Going back up to this one, when I do this cut, I call this delta x. And then if I have something like this, and I'm looking at this area right in here, if I do that and I do a vertical, uh, vertical cut, I go from one curve to another curve, but over here I go to one curve to itself. And so what I possibly need then is to deal with a horizontal cut, and I call this delta y. And the difference here is that this is going to be y equal to c. These are my limits, and the, the cuts will run from here all the way up to here. And this would be another y value, y equal to d. So that's what I have here. When this is in terms of y, then I get y equal to c all the way up to y equal to d. Let's try some examples here now. With this one, we want to find the area between a parabola and a line. And so if we draw our picture here, the pictures don't have to be perfect, but they can help you out here quite a bit. y equals x squared minus 2, we get a parabola. And then y equals x plus 4, we get something like this. So we're looking at this region in here. So one of the first things you have to do is you have to go ahead and find these points of intersection. If we do it algebraically, uh, we just do simultaneous equations. Both of these are equal to y, so I'm going to set these other parts equal to each other. Solve this out. You can do that quick. This here is a 4. And then I just solve the quadratic factor, and I get 3 and negative 2. So what's going to happen is that my lower bound would be my negative 2. My upper bound would be with 3. Now I've got to figure out which is my top function and which is my bottom function. And if I do subtract these, I should draw my cut in here. If I do subtract the top minus bottom, it's a bigger value minus a smaller value. So I'm always going to end up with a positive. So my line is my top function, and then my parabola is my bottom function. And so I subtract those two. And I wrap them all up with parentheses because I'm still finding the area of a rectangle. And I get this here. Uh, you can do it like this, piece by piece. 
I would prefer to simplify this a little bit, and so I get negative 2 to 3, which would give me negative x squared plus x, and then plus 6 dx. We integrate this, and so we're going to get negative x cubed over 3 plus x squared over 2 plus 6x, and we're evaluating that from negative 2 to 3. You go ahead and figure that out. So plugging in the 3 uh, here, and then plugging in the negative 2 and subtracting 2, you'd end up with that answer there. Moving on. Now this one gets a little bit trickier, just because the functions aren't as clean. Uh, if we draw the picture of this, this is the reciprocal of a semicircle, which you can consider that. And so when, it's, when it does do that, first of all, value at 0 would be 1 over square root of 9, so that would be 1 third. So my uh, y-intercept would be 1 third. And if I do the reciprocal of a circle, I'm going to get something like this. And if I do, and I guess this value stops at 3, and so we end up with that. And then if we do this, if you graph this on your calculator, the, it rises so sharply that you won't see this anymore. So you've got to be careful and maybe zoom in. And if we do this 1.5x plus 1, we get this cutting across. So the area between the two curves would be in here. And so I can draw my cut. Top minus bottom, no problem. Um, problem, though, occurs with my intersection values. We could go ahead and do the algebra with this. 0.5x plus 1 is equal to 1 over the square root of 9 minus x squared. I prefer, though, to use your calculator, and you can find the points of intersection. So here's the graph on my calculator. I guess it did show up. Sometimes the pixels just drop off. And so you might have to zoom in to see what's going on there. That will give you a little bit better picture. What we want to do is find those points of intersection. Uh, so you can go second calc and do that. So you can find the points of intersection now. So you go second calc and slide down to intersect or just type in the number 5. And first curve, y1, y2, and guess, there's my value right there. Now, I like all these decimal places. You should keep as many decimal places as possible. And if you notice, this says x equal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my home screen and watch what happens when I type in x. Wow, there it is. There's my value. So I'm going to take x, and I'm going to store it into a variable a. So there it is. And if I do the same thing, I'm going to store in a, the other intersection point. And with that other intersection point, it's right here. Now, if I go to my home screen again, type in x, look what happens. It's a new value. So what I can do is I can take this x and I can store it into alpha B. So now I got both of those in alpha A and alpha B. Why I want to do that is I just want to carry a lot of decimal places along. So now when I go ahead and graph this, I'm going to show you another trick here too. What I can do is instead of typing both these functions, I can go to my variables and go Y variables and I can take my top minus my bottom and you just got to make sure these are in the right order which is number 2. So it's y1 minus y2. That would be top minus bottom. If I reverse this, my answer eventually would be negative. So if I graph that subsequent graph, I actually got too much on here. I'll take. So this is the result of the top minus bottom function. And now I can go to second calc and slide on down to number 7. And my lower limit now, instead of typing in all those decimal places, I can just go alpha A. There it is. And that gives me that value. Perfect. And then I can go alpha B. And there we go. 
there's my error under the curve, there's my result. And so I can use that answer along with what I have. Okay, now that we have our answer, let's go back and figure out what we really did with this problem. So we took the integral, and, we, and it was a definite integral, so I went from A to B. Now, if I put A and B in here, nobody will know what I'm talking about. I have to designate somewhere on my paper what A and B are. If I designate that, then I can use A and B as many times as I want, and I know what you're talking about. But make sure that you do designate that. So if I do A and B, then this would be G of X minus my F of X DX. There's my integral. And then here's my answer. I forget what it is offhand. 4.1758. If you did this with this information, and F and G definitely marked here, then you would have full points for just this right here, as long as everything was designated. Now, if we want to do this by hand, we can do this by hand as well. Uh, this would be equal to G, my antiderivative of that would be X squared over 4 plus X. And then the antiderivative of my F function, oh, that looks like the arc sine. That's the arc sine of X over A, which is X over 3. And this would also be evaluated from A to B. So you'd have to plug those things in and take the difference of those. So there's the antiderivative, plug in A and B, and then you should be able to get your answer, which should be the same thing as this. Carrying these decimal places, though, is really a pain. And so, once again, using your calculator will help you out tremendously with that. If we go to our last example, what we have here is, well, it looks like X in terms of Y, and so maybe we switch this around a little bit. And so this is a parabola that opens up left, this way, and then y equal to x, which is this. And if I solve this one, 2 minus y squared is equal to y. This is equal to x, this is equal to x, so I set the y portions together. And if you solve this out, you get y equal to negative 2 and 1. Now, this is y, not x anymore. And also, some other things is that if I build my rectangles in the dx fashion here, yeah, top minus bottom is this curve minus this curve, but if I go over here, top minus bottom is the curve to itself. We don't like doing that because we'll have to split up into two different integrals here, and there's some funny business with this, with this portion here as well. Top minus bottom, well, you'd have to actually do part of it. So what we do instead is we turn this over to y, especially since this was given to us in y and I go right minus left instead. And so I set up my integral, and it's going to be right minus left dy. That means that these limits are y's as well. Well, that's okay because I solve for y here, and it goes from negative 2 to 1. So down here, this is negative 2, and then up here, this is 1. And so now with this, I take the, the right minus the left. And so I have my right curve, which is the parabola, and minus my left curve. And so I have this set up here. And to do this on your calculator, you'll have to go y1 is equal to 2 minus x squared, and y2 is equal to x. There's no way to do that otherwise, other than that. But if you, if you turn your head, the area is going to be the same no matter if it's y in terms of x or x in terms of y. That's why we can do that. The other option is to use the fn int. I'm going to write that function and talk about it. You can use fn int, and this is your function that you put in here. This is with respect to which variable are you talking about. And since we switched x and y, we're doing this with respect to y. And this is your lower limit of integration and this would be your upper limit of integration and you put that in and that will evaluate it for you if you finally look at this I can do this in terms of Y or in terms of X I'm gonna get exactly the same answer they're gonna be the same but just turned but the area would be the same ex with both here's the final piece if we have different sections we gotta split it up into different integrals thank you